Spikes, what is up? There's been a ton of new products lately, and it's been so long since this card was previewed that I totally forgot it exists. Saw in Half is an instant for two and a black that reads, Destroy target creature. If that creature dies this way, its controller creates two tokens that are copies of that creature, except their base power is half that creature's power and their base toughness is half of that creature's toughness. Round up each time. I thought about doing a Better Know a Combo episode for this card, but there are just so many things this card enables. So rather than picking just one, I've decided to assemble all my favorite combos, interactions, and niche rules curiosities into a single video. Let's get right to it. When I was first doing research for this video, I put out a tweet asking for people's favorite saw in half targets. The most common answer, without a doubt, was Worm Coil Engine. Normally, when Worm Coil Engine dies, it creates a pair of 3-3 Worm Tokens. One has Death Touch, and one has Life Link. When you saw a Worm Coil Engine in half, though, you still get a pair of 3-3 Worm Tokens just like before. But you'll also get a pair of 3-3 Worm Coil Engines. They both have Death Touch and Life Link, and when they die, they each create a pair of 3-3 Worm Tokens just like the big one would. This is so much value, it's easy to see why it was the number one most common response. These two are big favorites of our good friends over at Infinitokens. See if you can guess why. These work essentially the same way. When you saw Triplicate Titan in half, you get a pair of 5-5 Triplicate Titans. Then its dies trigger goes on the stack and you'll get three 3-3 three, three Golems. One with Flying, one with Vigilance, and one with Trample. Each of the 5-5s five have the full Triplicate Titan rules text, so when those die, they'll make three 3-3 three, three golems each. Phyrexian Triniform, on the other hand, just makes a trio of vanilla 3-3 three, three golems when it dies, but you've got the option to bring it back later with Encore for 12 colorless mana. You can saw either the original Triniform or the tokens it creates if you've got enough mana after activating Encore from the graveyard. Either way, it's a ton of tokens, and if you need a way to track all of them efficiently, make sure you check out Infinite Tokens Dry Erase Tokens. They're not sponsoring this episode, but it's a product we all use and love, so there's a link in the description if you want to pick up a set. So far, these have all been pretty straightforward. So for number four, why don't we talk about one that's a little less intuitive? Sarah Ascendant's Printed Power and Toughness are 1-1, one, one. but if you've got more than 30 life, it gets plus five plus five and flying. When you saw Sarah Ascendant in half, if you've got more than 30 life, saw in half checks its power and toughness as it exists on the battlefield right now, not its printed power and toughness. This means that you'll get a pair of 3-3 Sarah Ascendant tokens, and if you're still above 30 life when saw in half resolves, they'll each get plus 5 plus 5 and flying due to their own static effects, making them 8-8s. This is one of the rare cases where the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. Our good friend Gary is a mainstay in a lot of Aristocrats decks, and it's really easy to see why. Even if you don't have any permanents on the battlefield when you cast it, Grey Merchant of Ashvidel will enter the battlefield, and based on its own two devotion, it'll drain each of your three opponents for two life and gain you six in the process. If you saw it in half, you'll get two triggers and they each see a total of four devotion to black on the battlefield. When the stack's empty, you'll have drained each of your opponents for 8 and gained 24 life in the process. There are definitely worse things that you could be sawing in half. And if you like this, you're going to love my old pal Massacre Worm. Creating two of them means that every creature I don't control that's currently on the battlefield gets minus 4 minus 4 until end of turn. And every time a creature dies, its controller is going to lose 4 life instead of the standard 2. Gross. This next one is absolutely nutty, and it should be for 6 blue blue. In fact, I might have to do a totally separate video about the coolest non-creature permanents to copy with this card, because I've seen some wild game states result from this one. At a baseline though, Astral Dragon gets you two copies of non-creature permanents. Then when you saw it in half, you'll make four more copies of pretty much anything you want. Even if you're copying something super modest, like a Signet, it's still gonna net you six mana. And if you pick something more impactful, things are going to get out of hand real quick. Speaking of getting out of hand, can we talk about Nyx Bloom Ancient for a sec? This creature is non-legendary. This means that if you can manage multiple copies of it, the effects are going to stack. That's right, sawing Nyx Bloom Ancient in half makes your lands tap for 9. This next one comes to us from none other than the godfather of Commander, Sheldon Menery. 
Ochre Jelly is a 0 0 ooze for 1 green and X with Trample that reads Ochre Jelly enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. When Ochre Jelly dies, if it had 2 or more plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, create a token that's a copy of it at the beginning of the next end step. The token enters the battlefield with half that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on it rounded down. This one takes advantage of the same rules interaction as Sarah Ascendant. Normally, if you clone the Ochre Jelly, the copy will enter as a 0, zero with no plus 1 plus 1 counters on it because it wasn't cast. After the copy enters, but before anyone gets priority, state-based actions get checked and the 0-0 zero zero dies. When you saw Ochre Jelly in half, though, the effect that creates the copies determines the power and toughness of the copies based on the power and toughness of Ochre Jelly as it exists on the battlefield, not its printed power and toughness. This means that if your Ochre Jelly has two plus one plus one counters on it, Saw in Half will create two 1-1 one one Ochre Jellies as it resolves. As a little added bonus, at the end step you're going to create another token copy of the original Ochre Jelly due to its own dies trigger. No Saw in Half list is complete without the obvious, so I'm contractually obligated to mention Dockside Extortionist here. There's no real clever interaction or rules loophole here, just a ton of mana. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about Torrential Gear Hulk. Sawing this bad boy in half creates a pair of 3-3 Torrential Gear Hulks. And when they enter, they'll allow you to cast one thing each from your graveyard without paying their mana costs. Like, and I'm just spitballing here, the saw in half that you just cast? If you cast it again, you can saw one of the token copies in half, getting a pair of 2-2 Gear Hulks. The Gear Hulk trigger that allowed you to recast the saw in half from your graveyard will end up exiling it, so you can't keep going, but in total you'll be able to cast three more instants and sorceries from your graveyard for free. At that point it doesn't even really matter what the spells are, they're going to be a backbreaker. In fact, this entire cycle of Gear Hulks are going to make a huge splash, except for maybe the white one. So I highly recommend the entire cycle if you're looking for something good. You might be sitting here thinking, value's great, but how can I win the game? These next few interactions actually directly result in you winning the game. If you saw a Mere Battlesphere in half, you're going to end up with two 2-4 two, Mere Battlespheres and 12 1-1 one, one Mere Tokens. If we were talking value here, this would already be pretty good, but if you've got mechanized production, those 12 1-1 one, one Mere Tokens are enough to win the game. Along the same lines, if you're playing Saw in half in a deck that can double token production, you can actually win the game with Biovisionary. With Doubling Season, Anointed Procession, Parallel Lives, or Adrix and Nev in play, sawing a Biovisionary in half results in four 1-2 Biovisionary tokens at instant speed, but you can pull this off during any player's post-combat main phase. Just keep in mind that Biovisionary's trigger has an intervening if. This means that if you don't control four Biovisionaries at the very beginning of an end step, before anybody gets priority, it won't trigger at all. This is why you'll want to do it in the post-combat main. Now, I struggled with classifying this next one as value or combo, because honestly, it's both. If you saw Eternal Witness in half, you'll end up with a pair of 1-1 one, one Eternal Witness tokens that will each retrieve something from your graveyard. This means you can get your saw in half back and one other card. You can use this for value, but if the other card produces at least three mana, like a Dockside Extortionist or a Lion's Eye Diamond, you can actually turn this into a combo. Here's how you can execute it with Lion's Eye Diamond. With Eternal Witness and Lion's Eye Diamond in play, I'll cast Saw in half targeting Eternal Witness. Then hold priority, and I'll activate Lion's Eye Diamond discarding my hand and making three black. At this point, people can interact by countering the Saw in half or destroying the Eternal Witness. When Saw in half resolves, it creates a pair of 1-1 one, one Eternal Witness tokens, and they'll enter the battlefield triggering their own abilities. One trigger targets the LED, and the other targets Saw in half. Either of these abilities can be countered, and at this point if you've got spot removal, you'll have to remove both Eternal Witness tokens to stop the combo. You can also fire off instant speed graveyard hate like Surgical Extraction or Extirpate to pop either the Saw in half or the LED in the graveyard before they return to my hand. Once the two Eternal Witness triggers resolve, I've finished the first iteration of the loop and I'm ready to go again. If you really want to shut them down. You can use effects like Knight of Souls Betrayal or Plague Engineer to give the Eternal Witness copies minus one minus one. This means that they won't stick around long enough for me to continue copying them. You can also play Static Graveyard Hate like Leyline of the Void, Rest in Peace, or Silent Gravestone to prevent the combo pieces from coming back. 
or tax effects like Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, or Thorn of Amethyst to increase the amount of mana required to sustain the loop beyond what the mana producer can provide. Along a similar vein, Dualcaster Mage can combo with Saw in Half to make infinite hasty Dualcaster Mages. This combo is actually identical to the combo with Heat Shimmer or Twin Flame, so if you want to break down on that, we've got a video that does a deep dive here. There will also be a link to that video in the show notes. Up until this point, we've only talked about sawing one thing in half. But what if we could saw everything in half? If that's your jam, you'll love any of Precursor Golem, Zada Hedron Grinder, or Mirror Wing Dragon to double up on your entire board of creatures. Or if you want to throw the entire game into chaos, you can saw an Ink Treader Nephilim in half, doubling everyone's board of creatures. This is one of those interactions that can take a long time to parse if there are a lot of creatures with enters or leaves the battlefield triggers, so make sure nobody's got dinner plans before you start sawing. Last, and absolutely not least, let's talk about some legendary creatures. When you saw a legendary creature in half, the token copies are also legendary, so you only get to keep one of them. Sometimes that's a downside, but sometimes when you want them to die, it's a huge upside. Let's start out with Elishnorn. Our Phyrexian Queen gives creatures opponents control minus two minus two as a static ability. But what happens when we copy her? All creatures I don't control will get minus four minus four for a hot second before state-based actions get checked. This is when the legendary rule makes me sacrifice one of them and also when creatures with zero toughness die. This can do a pretty good impression of a board wipe on most boards and at the end of the day, I'll still end up with a slightly smaller Elishnorn. You can also do this with Kokusho the Evening Star. When the original Kokusho dies, each opponent will lose 5 life and you'll gain 15. When the Saw in Half resolves, you'll make two more Kokushos. And when state-based actions get checked, you'll have to sacrifice one of them, causing each opponent to lose another 5 life and gaining you another 15. We've arrived at the 26th and final card to Saw in Half, and this one's a personal favorite of mine, Ratadrabic of Urborg. When you saw this one in half, you'll create two 2-2 two -two copies you'll have to sacrifice one of them when state-based actions get checked. This triggers the surviving Ratadrabic, who will create a third one that's a non-legendary 2-2 zombie. This one will stick around because it's not legendary, meaning every time another legendary creature you control dies, both the legendary one and the non-legendary one will trigger, making you two non-legendary copies of whatever died. These are just a few of my favorites, but with 30,000 unique cards in Magic, I'm bound to have missed at least one. If you've made it this far, why not drop a like and comment your favorite thing to saw in half? I'm constantly astounded by people's creativity, and open-ended cards like this tend to bring creativity to the forefront. If you want to pick up any of the cards I mentioned today, make sure you head over to facetofacegames.com and use code SPIKEFEEDERS for 5% off. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.